I'm going to call the uh, July meeting of the Bristol County Board to order. Mr. Kalish, please take the roll. Carol? Here. Brewer? Here. McKee? McKee? Here. Seed? Rennish? Luck? Here. Manny? Here. Gotcho? Mm -hmm. Glassburner? Here. Rudersdorf? Here. Gentis? Here. Turk? Here. Cosgrove? Here. Frank? Here. Severson? Present. Williamson? Here. Cooey? Here. Fleming? Here. Voice? Here. McGuire? Here. You have a quorum, 17. Thank you. Uh, joining us tonight is my friend and pastor of the Park Street Christian Church, Randy Sanders, who will Supervisor District 2 uh, will not happen tonight. So you can cross that one off. On number 16 and number 17 are both held over or deleted from this agenda. Uh, both of them require uh, more study and more delving into it, I guess I'll put it that way. Our new administrator uh, has a degree in uh, planning, and she wants to look these things over, and I appreciate it very much. So we're deleting those two things, and number seven. So that brings us down to a 27-point agenda, and I would have entertained a motion for Approval. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Mr. McKee seconds. All those in favor, signify by, signify by saying aye. 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 I'm sorry, I was just wondering if you could clarify why we are not appointing the Common Board Supervisor. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't advertise it correctly. Okay, thank you. We discovered, much to our chagrin. Okay. Derek has offered many, many apologies for this. And I've forgiven him. I, I will, I will, I will own that. It was when I was prepping for the documentation for the meeting this morning. Um, I realized that the ad had to be published in both newspapers, the Observer and uh, the Shopping News. And obviously, we can't proceed if we're not doing this 125 percent. So, you have my sincerest apologies. It will never happen. The minutes of the June 20th meeting were. Published in your packet. Do you have any changes, corrections? If not, I'm going to declare those approved as published. Public comment. Do we have members of the public here who wish to comment? Okay, takes us down to number eight. Election of a County Board Vice Chairman. And with the uh, resignation of Mr. Murphy Lopez, um, he was the Vice Chairman, and that leaves that, that position open, and we can't function without a Vice Chairman, because, uh, well, we can't. We need one. And to that, uh, and I'm going to open nominations for Vice Chairman of the Richland County Board, Mr. Manning. I nominate Dave Turk. Nominate Dave Turk. Do we have a second? 
Second. Mr. McGuire? Okay. Are there any other nominations? Ms. Gentis? I nominate Carrie Severson. Carrie Severson? Do we have a second? <laughs> Mr. McKee? You're going to need some more ballots out there. Mr. Chair? This is Supervisor Severson. Yes, Mr. Severson. Uh, I think after careful consideration, I probably would withdraw my name from consideration as vice chair at this time. I do think Ms. Chen is still for her support. Okay, you're withdrawing. Yeah, sure. Turning down the nomination. Yes. But I do think Ms. Chen and Mr. Frank for her support. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay, we've asked three times. Uh, I'm going to close the nominations then for Vice Chairman of the Richland County Board and we'll conduct an election. Mr. McKee. I make a motion. I make a motion that we uh, close the nomination Okay, suspend the rules and... Yes. Okay. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Williamson. Okay, uh, all those in favor of casting their ballot for David Turk, signify by saying aye. 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 I don't think I need paper. Okay, it's done. Congratulations, Mr. Turk. Thank you. Uh, number nine, Mr. Kalish, would you read the ordinance, please? This will be ordinance number 576, the zoning ordinance number five, ordinance number 23-16. Uh, that the following described 5.8084 acre parcel belonging to David Roker and in the town of Una Vista is hereby rezoned from General Ag and Forestry to the A and Residential District. This ordinance shall be effective on July 19th of 2023 and is being offered to you by the Land and Zoning Standing Committee on May 1 of 2023. Thank you. You've heard the ordinance. What's your pleasure, Ms. Gentis? Makes the motion. Do we have a second? Mr. Cooey. Uh, do we have background on this? Mr. Bindle. The background on this parcel is that Mr. Roker purchased a large farm. He is separating out the house, the barn, the nut shed, and five acres. So it's going to be zoned to a residential. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay. You've heard the ordinance. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the ordinance is adopted. Number 10, Mr. Kalish. This will be ordinance number 23-17, amendment number 577 to zoning ordinance number five. That the following described eight acre parcel belonging to Jeremiah Heggie in the town of Aiken is hereby rezoned from General Aiken Forestry to Aiken Residential District. This ordinance shall be effective on July 19th of 2023 and is again being offered to you by the Land and Zoning Standing Committee on June 5th of 2023. You've heard the ordinance, what's your pleasure? Mr. Gooey, seconded by Manning. Background? The background on this is Mr. Hagee owns the lot that's being rezoned in our land around it. The current zoning around the house and buildings is already five acres of zone A residential. He's adding two more acres to it to make the lot larger. Thank you. Any questions? All those in favor of this ordinance signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. Number 11, report and positions for zoning received since the last county board session. Mr. Bindle? There is a petition by Andres Skiba to rezone 18.76 acres from A Forestry to A Residential in section 16, Town of Orion. There's a petition by Susan Brian Willebrandt and David Alderman to rezone 
5.61 acres from A Core Street to A Residential, Section 4, Town of Westford. There's a petition by Owen and Susie Dwetlier to rezone 24.23 acres from A Core Street to A Residential, Section 30, Town of Dayton. There is a petition by Verlin Asmussen to rezone 1.24 acres from A Forest Street to Commercial and 6.153 acres from A Forest Street to A Residential. Section 6, Town of Orion. We're going to be busy. Um, how about uh, number 12? Any petitions recommended for denial? Nothing yet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bindle. Number 13, a resolution requesting the state of Wisconsin provide 18.7 million in stable core funding support for county conservation department staffing. Mr. Kalish. This will be resolution number 23-68. Now therefore be resolved, the Richland County Board of Supervisors hereby supports and urges the Wisconsin Legislature and the Joint Finance Committee to provide 18.7 million in stable base funding for county conservation, staffing, and fulfillment of state's, state's core funding goal, and in recognition of county LWCD professionals are among the best and most cost-effective solutions. We have to improving water quality, achieving clean and safe drinking water, and supporting a viable agricultural industry at the same time. Being further resolved that a copy of this resolution shall be forwarded by the county clerk to the governor of the state of Wisconsin, the members of the Joint Committee on Finance, and the state senator and state representatives representing Richland County, being further resolved that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passage and publication, and this is being offered to you by the Land and Zoning Standing Committee on June 26th of 2023. Thank you. Uh, you've heard the resolution. What's your pleasure? Melissa Lock makes the motion, seconded by Richard McKee. Uh, somebody, Melissa, are you going to take this? I can. Sure. So I hope everyone was able to read the background that I gave. Uh, with this document in our folders. Uh, essentially, the state has been, our base funding is currently 8.9 million, and in the last few by annum, they have given an additional amount of money over that. And what happened this year is they, they are still giving us our 8.9 million in base funding, but then the amount they're giving us on top of that is less than it was last year. So essentially, the funding for our staff and land conservation is, um, has been cut. And it's not hugely significant for us. There are some counties that it's actually impacting a lot more. But um, I think this is an important piece, uh, a resolution that's important because this is, the work that they do is some of the most impactful way that we can actually affect the quality of our land and the quality of our water in our county, um, which affects the health of all of us. So um, we as a committee felt that this was important enough to just let our legislators know that that we are, we would like to see more support in this area, and definitely not any cuts. If you speak to the legislatures, um, I know that Representative Kurtz has been incredibly supportive and worked really hard to get the funding that we did get for land conservation this year. He is on joint finance, so that's that's a big deal that he is supportive. Um, Howard Mark, you know, Senator Markline has not been quite as as supportive. Um, so if you know if you have contacts with, with those representatives because they're on joint finance, um, they do carry a lot of weight. So I felt it was important since they are represented, they're on they're on joint finance and they represent our county, that we should officially let them know that we support the funding for our conservation departments. Thank you, Melissa. Do you know are are other counties uh, doing similar resolutions? They are. Yes. Okay. Yes. And actually, this was considered at the Wisconsin Counties Association a meeting that I was unable to attend, so I'm not sure. I believe it passed at that committee. Do you know, John, who passed at that committee? I'm not sure. But I know that it had full support. Of WCA did recommend that it be um, sent on to the annual meeting at the Counties Association meeting in the fall. Okay. Thank you. Anyone have any questions and or comments further before we vote? All those in favor of this resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. A resolution to pay a bill to the Richland County Snowmobile Alliance from the 22-23 Snowmobile Maintenance Grant. 
Mr. Kalish. This will be resolution number 23-69. Now therefore be resolved by the Richland County Board of Supervisors that approval is hereby granted to, to pay a bill from the Richland County Snowmobile Alliance for grooming and non-grooming hours through the 2022-2023 Snowmobile Maintenance Grant. Be further resolved that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passage and publication, and this is being offered to you by members of the board members of the Fair Recycling and Park Standing Committee on June 28th of 2023. Thank you. Uh, you've heard the resolution. What's your pleasure? Mr. Williamson and Carrie Severson seconds. Uh, Carrie, are you going to give us an explanation of this one? No. Kathy Cooper's here, though. She's going to give it. The, the bill is always over $10,000. We have to bring it here. Um, the, gr the grant period ended June 30th. It goes on the state fiscal year. And um, up above it says payment not to exceed $30,000. The reason for that is they've got all their non-grooming hours, the Alliance does, into the, the system that's called SNARS. I don't know what it stands for, but it's called SNARS. And the um, grooming hours, they have GPS units on their groomers that upload the data, the hours, to this system. Well, there was a glitch somewhere and there was, I don't know, it was about $4,000 worth of hours that were not uploaded. And so they're trying to work on it, but we have to have a check cut. So, because I have to send in for reimbursement by the 31st of this month. So um, we, we left it kind of open until hopefully if we can't get resolved in the next couple of days, then it'll be what we've got. And it's like 20 some thousand, the bill is, without those extra $4,000 in grooming hours. So I, I don't want to drag this out, but is this the same thing that we do every year? or We do it every year. The grant is part, is part of the grant. We can reimburse the different, either the clubs and or, in this case, the Richland County clubs themselves, except for Hillsboro, we go through the, the Snowmobile Alliance. And so this money goes to reimburse them for their time. All right. Okay, any other questions for Kathy Cooper? If not, all those in favor of this resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Number. 15, a resolution relating to the county's contribution to the cost of town highway bridge construction required by Wisconsin statute section 82.08. Mr. Kalish. This will be resolution number 23-70. Now therefore be it resolved by the Richland County Board of Supervisors that the county shall pay the following amounts as financial aid for the following bridge or culvert projects in the following towns as mandated by Wisconsin statute section 82.08. There's the town of Henrietta High Hill Drive at $15,466.56 with a grant aid of $7,733.28. Um, the town of Henrietta again for Quarry Drive, $13,476.03 total cost. Uh, amount of county aid granted, $6,738.02. And then uh, the totals for both of those are the $28,942.59 with the amount of county grant aid being $14,471.30, being further resolved that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passage and publication, it is being offered to you by the Public Works Standing Committee on July 13 of 2023. Thank you. Uh, you've heard the resolution. What's your pleasure? Mr. Manning and Mr. Williamson seconds. And anybody want to speak to this? I think it's required by state statute. In case you think we're giving money away, and we're not. We're doing what we're supposed to do. Steve? Yeah, that's correct. It's, uh, we do it every year. These were the only two applications we had for the past year. So. It's a way for the state to filter more money down to the townships for those town roads. And some of them aren't in very good shape, I'll tell you that. Because we, me and the driver's ed kids, travel those roads. So. I try to explain to them now there's a big difference between state highways and county roads and town roads. So you better slow down, Jack, I tell him. This is probably not a 55 mile an hour road. Okay. 
We've heard the resolution and the explanation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Okay, then that takes us then to <coughs> number 18, a resolution approving a professional service agreement with John Holcomer. Mr. Kalish. This will be resolution number 23-73. Now therefore we are resolved by the original county board of supervisors that approval is hereby given to enter into a professional services agreement with John Hockmer of Verona, Wisconsin, commencing July 17th, 2023, and ending October 24, 2023, to provide consulting and training services to the county to assist the county in the preparation of the 2024 Richland County budget and other consultative, consultative <laughs> services to assist in the transition to a new county administrator at a cost of $11,000 per month. Being further resolved that the funding for this project shall be covered from the general fund, Fund 10, being further resolved that the county administrator shall have authority to sign all necessary documents and executing the intentions of this resolution, including the authority to utilize a 10% contingency. Being further resolved that this resolution shall be effective upon its passage and publication. And this is being offered to you by the Finance and Personnel Standing Committee on July 5, 2023. Okay, you've heard the resolution. What's your pleasure? Ingrid Glassbrenner and Bob Frank seconds. Okay, John uh, Hokemer, do you want to step out of the room while we discuss this? Well, yes. Uh, I don't think that's necessary, but you offered to do that, so. And I will preface this discussion with my own remarks that we wouldn't have gotten through this without John and uh, he's done a remarkable job in the three short months he's been with us. Uh, it seems like a lot has happened, and uh, that's for sure. And proof positive is here on my left. Uh, our new administrator and Candace Pesch is with us, and that was a pretty seamless uh, process, I will admit. That, that really went well. Uh, numerous things, too numerous uh, to mention, John has been involved in. And, uh, I think this is money well spent. It, it, it'll ease us through the transition, and this all is happening at a critical time, budget time. And the idea is to work keep John on to work through the budget. And he's already done, uh, started major parts of the budget. The capital planning uh, has been started and he started that process and the, the entire budget uh, the packets have been sent out to the various department heads. So uh, he recommended and I concur that he stay on through the budget process uh, he is shifting, he will be shifting his emphasis. He will no longer be the administrator, but he will be now a consultant to the new administrator and to me and any of you that you have a question. Uh, I'll throw it open to the floor. Any comments, please? Mr. McGuire. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, John stepped in at a time you know, when, when we were looking for money, and he's checked in at a very difficult time there. I, I thought he did an exceptional job. And one thing I really like about him is, for a guy like me who doesn't hear real good, he speaks up. I can hear him really good. <laughs> okay, for that alone. Right, Bob? Thank you. So uh, budget-wise, this is an additional roughly 33-ish thousand dollars. Where's the budget with that? Is What's the anticipation? Is that, you know, what's the vision of that to make sure we're not going over yeah, the budget. We're going to have to find it, and of course, we didn't have to pay Clint, so that covered, you know, the interim part of it. Now we're paying Candace, and we'll be paying John now, kind of doubling up for a few months. But uh, we'll find the money. We will find the money. Yes. Is there? Is there a, a minimum amount of time that he has to spend here uh, on this? I, well, he was 
skip. What does it say in that? I, I don't. Three days a week. And of course, that was it's, that was the deal for the interim, and he was here at least four, sometimes five days a week. So we're getting our, our money's worth there. Um, I think it's a good deal, and I think we need to do it. So. All right, I'll call for a vote then. Uh, all those in favor of the resolution uh, contracting with John Hokemer signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. The resolution is adopted. So we can let John back in now if he wants to come back. Number 19, a resolution approving the Department of Health and Human Services applying for and accepting a 2024 Section 5310 Vehicle and Operating Grant. Mr. Kalish. This will be resolution number 23-74. Now therefore be resolved by the original County Board of Supervisors that approval is hereby granted for the Aging and Disability Resource Center of the Department of Health and Human Services to apply for and accept the 2024 Section 5310 vehicle and operating grant from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation in the amount of $30,172.80, being further resolved that the grant requires a 50% minimum county match, which can be either cash and or in-kind funding, which would be accomplished by Section 85.21 non-federal transportation funds and direct costs supported by Health and Human Services Fund number 56, being further resolved that approval is hereby granted for the grant funds to be spent in accordance with the terms of the grant and the Director of Health and Human Services, Ms. Trisha Clements, is authorized to sign on behalf of the county any necessary documents to carry out this resolution. Being further resolved that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passing and publication, and this is being offered to you by the County Board members of the Health and Human Services and Veterans Standing Committee on July 13th of 2023. You've heard the resolution. What's your pleasure? Yes, Danielle Rudersdorf makes the motion. Mr. Williamson seconds. And Trish, did you want to speak to this? Yes, there you are. So this is a grant that we apply for on a yearly basis. This helps fund our transportation program to get um, those living with a disability and seniors to their appointments, um, shopping, whatever they need. So we're just asking that this be approved. Something we do each year. It's been a successful program. All those in favor of this resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. And might as well stay there, Trish. Right. Resolution approving a provider contract for 2023 for the Health and Human Services Department, Mr. Kalish. This should be resolution number 23-75. Now therefore be resolved by the original county board of supervisors that approval is hereby granted for the health and human services board to enter into the following 2023 contract with most transitional living center of milwaukee for one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars to provide group home placement services for youth being served by the child and youth services unit being further resolved that health and human services board is hereby authorized to amend any of the above contracts by not more than 15 percent and be it further resolved that the director of health and human services department Ms. Trisha Clements, is hereby authorized to sign the above contracts on behalf of Richland County in accordance with this resolution, be it further resolved that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passing and publication. It is once again being offered to you by the Richland County Board members of the Health and Human Services and Veterans Standing Committee on July 13 of 2023. You've heard the resolution. What's your pleasure? Yes, Julie Fleming makes the motion, seconded by Rick Lashbretter. Uh, Trish. This is a contract that we're asking you to approve for a youth that we have currently in placement, and it is it is a court-ordered placement that he is ordered by the courts to be there. Okay, court-ordered placements. Okay, any questions? All those in favor of this resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Number 21, a resolution approving the Sheriff's Office applying for and accepting a NG9-1-1 PSAP grant 
from the Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs, Mr. Kalish. Resolution number 23-76, now therefore be resolved by the original County Board of Supervisors that approval is hereby granted for the Sheriff's Office to apply for and accept a grant from the Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs for improving 911 services. Be it further resolved that approval is hereby granted for the grant funds to be spent in accordance with the terms of the grant and the county administrators hereby authorize to sign on behalf of the county any documents needed to carry out this resolution. Be it further resolved that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passage and publication and is being offered to you by the Public Safety Standing Committee on July 7th of 2023. You've heard the resolution, what's your pleasure? And, uh, yes. Show me your name tag. Weiss. Barbara Weiss. It's just, you know, it, I suppose it's a function of age, but sometimes I look at you and I think, oh my God, I can't come up with a name, and I depend on the name tag. So, uh, seconded by that woman, Julie Fleming. I can see her name tags. All right, we have a motion and a second. And we have Sheriff Porter standing back to tell us about this. Uh, so this is a grant uh, we applied for last year. We were successful, we were awarded. Um, I don't know the exact dollar amount, but I believe between this grant and the next grant we're gonna talk about, we got close to around $300,000 last year. Actually, we're, we're implementing that money this year uh, to enhance one services for the county. Uh, this grant that we're applying for again this year, last year, helped us pay for an upgrade to our 911 system so we can uh, make that step into next gen 911. Uh, what we're looking to continue this year is um, obviously our end of next year for 2024 would be to uh, help uh, pay for those ongoing costs that we're going to have that we're going to incur with a new 911 system. Also, we're going to look at continuing to. Uh, implement more and better training for our dispatchers, enhanced training for our telecommunicators. Um, trying to think of what else we're gonna do with that. There was one other thing I wanted to hit and it's slipping me. But it again, it's to help uh, enhance our 911 services to the county. Chair Porter, any county match? Uh, yes, for this grant, there is a 10% match. Yeah, um, and as Supervisor Luck pointed out, we would be paying for these things out of our own pocket anyway. So now we're finding a way to get a little help with that. Okay, you've heard Sheriff Porter's explanation. Are you ready to vote? All those in favor of the application for and acceptance of this grant, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. The resolution is adopted. And I think Sheriff Porter is still standing there, so I think perhaps the next thing involves him. And it's a resolution amending the collective bargaining agreement with deputy sheriffs, Mr. Kalish. Well, we're on 22 did I skip? Did I skip? They're almost identical. So it's, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. A resolution approving the sheriff's office applying for and accepting the NG 9-1-1 GIS grant from the Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs, Mr. Kalish. Resolution number 23-77. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the original county board of supervisors that approval is hereby granted to the sheriff's office to apply for and accept a grant from the Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs for improving 911 mapping. Being further resolved that approval is hereby granted for the grant funds to be spent in accordance with the terms of the grant, and that the county administrator is hereby authorized to sign on behalf of the county any documents needed to carry out this resolution. Being further resolved that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passing and publication and is again offered to you by the Public Safety Standing Committee on July 7th, 2023. Okay, you've heard this resolution, what's your pleasure? Mr. Williamson, Mr. McKee seconds. Mr. Williamson makes the motion. Uh, now, Sheriff Porter, you can talk to this one. So I, I don't know if I'm the best person to talk to it, but uh, what I'll say is that uh, along with these new, these next-gen 911 systems, 
Um, they require uh, a certain level of accuracy in the data and the mapping. So in order to help us pay, um, we work, currently are contracting with a company to uh, clean up the data, which they've pretty well cleaned up the data, but to keep those maps accurate, keep updated information, add new addresses, um, all that kind of stuff. So this will help pay for that contracting service to keep the maps accurate. Okay, thank you. Question, Mr. Chair. Ms. Gentis. I just want, for information, I don't know what the Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs is. Who actually is that? Mr. So, right. Department of Military Affairs uh, was uh, the Office of the Office of Emergency Communications is under the Department of Military Affairs. Uh, the statute has identified the Office of Emergency Communications to handle statewide communications and the 911 system. So I'm actually chair of the state subcommittee that regulate that sets some of those standards. So the Department of Military Affairs is just the is just the organization that it was put under. And what is the Department of Military Affairs in Wisconsin? Is that our, our the Department of Military Affairs is uh, the Wisconsin National Guard. Okay. Uh, it's all those functions that that okay. happen. Okay. So it's the National Guard. I just wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah, it seems odd when you see it there. I, I missed it twice, so. Okay, Mr. Turn. Yes, Mr. Carroll. Uh, actually, I guess for both this and the prior, uh, how do we anticipate doing the matching for these? Okay, matching. Sheriff Porter. So, I, again, kind of to what Melissa's point was, is that it's the stuff we're going to have to pay for anyway. So, I mean, we have funds that we can draw from for these matches, like our 911 outlay and stuff like that, so. Okay, thank you. Anything else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion, resolution is adopted. Now, the resolution amending the collective bargaining agreement with the deputy sheriffs, Mr. Kalish. This will be resolution 23-78. Now therefore be resolved by the original county board of supervisors that the county enters into an MOU with the original county deputy sheriff's association, WPPA, amending parts of the collective bargaining agreement to better reflect 12 hour shifts and associated compensations. Be further resolved that sick leave accrual will be at the rate of 10.25 hours for the month of August, 2023, and then go to 12 hours per month and be it further resolved that the county board chair and the county administrator are hereby authorized to sign an MOU in accordance with this resolution. Be it further resolved that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passage and publication and is offered to you by the Finance and Personnel Standing Committee on June 23 of 2023. Thank you. You've heard the resolution. What's your pleasure? Mr. McKee, Mr. Turt, seconds. Sheriff Porter. So the shift move to 12 hour shifts uh, is a uh, retention, somewhat recruitment, but a retention uh, thing that we're going to try. So this is a trial period of 12 hour shifts. We're gonna change from our old antiquated 6-3 rotation to a rotation that basically it works as it's two on, two off, three on, two off, two on, three off. And if you put that in the schedule just right, what it means in a very short, simple way, is that every other weekend they will have Friday through Saturday, Friday through Sunday off. So we're going from a schedule that gives them one full weekend a month and maybe one partial weekend a month off to every other weekend they're gonna have a three day weekend. Um, and other counties around us do this? Correct. Um, every county around us does this except for Grant, which works 10 hour shifts but I believe they may be on 12 hour shifts in the jail. And I know the deputies union is all in favor of this. Yes, yep, so um, what we're discussing here tonight is for the union personnel or patrol personnel, uh, but the jail has actually already made the switch and I plan on bringing uh, to a future meeting a similar language for the uh, jail staff. Okay, thank you. You've heard it. Any other questions? Any concerns? McGuire, Mr. McGuire. Uh, 
Speak into the mic. I'd like to ask Mr. Wendell, how deep can we discuss this subject without having you in a closed session? Uh, I suppose that's difficult to answer without knowing what it is that you're <laughs> attempting to raise. I suppose you could ask the question and I reserve the right to recommend that it be discussed in closed session. Go ahead and ask the question, Dan. Well, yeah. Speak into the mic, though. What's that, sir? Speak into the microphone, please. Sorry. That's why I can't hear you. Uh, no, I, I, in the past, I, and you know, I've served on the board, but we usually cannot discuss anything about uh, any employees, uh, almost anything about employees, because even if we don't even touch on a monetary number, uh, we are somehow or another touching about a monetary number when we talk about days off and that sort of thing. So I'm just trying to be thorough here, and that's why I thought I'd ask counsel for an opinion. Okay. I would say that you know the motion is on the table. The the MO, the proposed MOU is in front of you. If the question is related to that, um, then I would say that it's available for discussion in open session. I will say that this was discussed pretty thoroughly at the Finance and Personnel Committee, and the, the union was there. The union representative was there. Uh, it, it seemed the way to go. So it's already been that's, it's already been discussed deeply by others. So. Yes, it has. Okay. All right, yes, sir. Very good. Thank you. Okay, you've heard the resolution. And what we want to do? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The resolution is adopted. Brings us to a motion here. Uh, would be in order to go into closed session. And I will entertain that motion. Mr. Manning. Mr. McKee. We'll do roll call and a yes means you want to go into closed session. Okay, so we will start with Manny. All right. Gotchel is not here. Glassburner. Gotchel's here. Aye. Thank you. Glassburner. Aye. Thank you. Rudersdorf. Aye. Gentis. Aye. Turk. Aye. Cosgrove. Aye. Frank? Aye. Severson? Yes. Williamson? Aye. Cooey? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Boyce? Aye. McGuire? Aye. Carroll? Aye. Brewer? Aye. C. McKee? Aye. Renish? And Luck? Aye. We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Severson has a question. So we are in closed session. We're back. Mr. McKee. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Attorney Wendell to serve as our representative of the UW system. Okay, and that's seconded by Daniel Ruderstorff. Now, I think I should ask you for an amendment to add to that negotiating team, perhaps. Okay. Who else would you yeah, like on that team? Yeah. Okay. Who else do you want on it? Oh, <laughs> that should be your call. Yeah. I think Mr. Wendell had something to add to that. Yeah. Well, he, he mentioned who, who has been. So, uh, Mr. Chair, to clarify, I am requesting solely my appointment as the primary representative. Right. Okay. The team or support network that I rely on will be more informal. Um, and does not require appointment. Great. Okay, Wendell will be the chief negotiator. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Our next order of business on our agenda, creation of an ad hoc campus reconfiguration committee. Uh, I have come up with a list of people, county board members, and I'm going to read it and 
see if you can approve it. And I hope I come, I'm, I've expanded, I started out with seven, now I'm up to nine. Mr. Chair, uh, I, I apologize. Did you clarify the purpose of this committee, um, just so it's clear for the record? This is a reconfiguration committee to study the campus, its, its use, the possible closure of the UW system, or partial closure, and what we will be doing with the campus property from this point forward. Okay. I have, I recommend these people to be on this committee. Linda Gentis has to be on the committee. She knows more about the campus than anyone. David Turk. Julie Fleming, Steve Williamson, Ingrid Glassbrenner, Marty Brewer, and then I added Gary Manning and Richard McKee this evening, and I'm adding Bob Frank to the list. Bob, if you agree to serve. I think that's nine. Did, am I coming up with nine people? Yep. So I would ask for your, I tried to, it's a very difficult topic, people, and it's important to the county, and it's, we don't want to, we don't want to strike out here, we got to get a hit, and uh, but we decide, at least come up with some options, and I, been asking for this for a couple years now, and for various reasons, uh, we haven't done so. But good reasons why we haven't done so, because to do so would be uh, capitulating or saying uh, we no longer want a university. So that was never the intent. The intent was if we had if we had this property to do what what we want. What would we do with it? So, uh, if you think that's a good group, and we'll be having a lot of meetings, not on Wednesdays though, not on Tuesdays. So. Those are golf nights. So, no, no, we'll we'll set up dates. We'll have to do a a bug or whatever we call those things. So, if you agree with the appointees, uh, I'd like someone to make a motion to that effect. Mr. Cooey, seconded by Rudersdorf, to agree to the appointment of these nine people to serve on the reconfiguration committee. All and, those of, and Mr. Chair, also the creation of said committee. And creation of said committee, yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, you'll be hearing about possible meeting dates. We'll have to get that started right away. Do we have a report, Mr. Hockemer? You do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I want to welcome Candace here. I know everyone has met her. Uh, I was extremely impressed the first time I met Candace, and I can tell you that every day that I get to know her better, I'm even more impressed with her as a person and, and with her abilities. So Candace officially began her position with the county last week, Monday, on July 10th, but the day that she was appointed by the county board and her agreement was approved, that's when she really started working for the county. She reads everything that we send her uh, and more, and uh, I'm just, I'm absolutely thrilled that she's here. I'm thrilled that I have an opportunity to work with her. And uh, I know that she was the right choice for, for Richland County. So welcome, Candace. Uh, just a couple 
couple other things real quick, and this report is uh, listed on slides 38 and 39 of your packet. Um, I know I've got a lot of very positive feedback from these reports for from the County Board of Supervisors, so I'm certain Candace will probably uh, continue that practice. Finance and Personnel Committee uh, met a couple times since our, our last board meeting. They approved the five-year CIP, which will come back to the full board in October when uh, we work on the budget. The committee also approved the timelines, the objectives, and the guidance for the 2024 budget. We talked about the transitioning to the 12-hour shifts in the Sheriff's Department. Um, the food closure at UW campus, I'll be talking a little bit more about that. And a uh, contract with Becker Professional Services to gauge really what the interest is in the county and moving forward with economic development efforts. And they're already in the planning stages uh, for that effort. The Rules and Strategic Planning Committee met after having not met for uh, the prior three months. And uh, I gave them an update on where we are as far as the strategic plan that was put in place. And the, the committee is very interested in getting feedback from the county board as to changes that were made recently regarding the organization and the structure of the county, what's working well, what perhaps could work better. Uh, so any feedback that you could give us um, on those changes that were made, we would appreciate that. Um, I've got mentioned in here about a meeting with neighboring counties. Uh, Marty and I met with Iowa, Grand, Green, and Lafayette counties. And we talked about a number of issues, including the campus issue, employee compensation, recruitment, retention, health insurance, compensation, benefits, and any other issues that would impact uh, county governments. And they meet quarterly. Uh, it was a really good meeting. And uh, it was good to see a lot of people that I've worked with over the past. I specifically wanted to mention about working with the staff regarding the closure of food service on the UW campus. Um, I've had several meetings with Stephanie and Cindy since our last uh, county board meeting, and they were absolutely fantastic to work until the very end. Um, they were really concerned about making sure that everything got, got closed appropriately. Um, in fact, it was so much that, that I had to tell Stephanie, you have to start, you have to start looking for a job, you know, and not worry so much about that everything's going to get closed up here. It will get closed up. So they did. Uh, they did just the best job that they possibly could do. Um, they worked with vendors, so some of the unopened items, the food items that the vendors were able to take back, they took back. Um, other items that they didn't take back that were unopened, we worked with Pine Valley, and since they use the same distributor and the same foods, uh, Pine Valley then took the remainder of the food that was unopened and some paper plates and forks and knives and, and other utensils, and they're gonna pay back um, you know, payback at cost to the food service. Um, Stephanie and Cindy stayed on the payroll until the, the 15th, and yesterday Cindy actually started working at Pine Valley, um, and Stephanie is still in the process of looking, but again, uh, I can't thank them enough for, for the efforts that they made through, through mid-July. Uh, a little more of the update on the extension move to Community Services Building and to Melville Hall. Uh, that move was completed by the deadline, which was uh, June 15th. There was a lot of work that went in, in uh, that was involved in that. So special thanks to Randy Nelson. We had four individuals from the County Highway Department. We also had a dumpster out there, and uh, that move you know, really, really took place. And our goal was to accomplish that with minimal disruption and as little uh, cost as possible. So when we total up all those costs, it was $1,955.56. We sent an invoice to um, UW Extension at the state level, and they have informed us that they will pay that reimbursement to us in full. So that was great news. We're continuing to work on a 2024 budget, and we will continue to update the, the Finance and Personnel Committee and the board as we go along in that process. Ultimately, there will be a public hearing and approval of the 2024 budget and the CIP, the five-year CIP, on October 24th. So make sure that you have that date on your calendar because we need to have a quorum and we need to pass a budget. So please make sure that's on your calendar. The, uh, we finalized the restructuring of the county maintenance department that took effect July 1st. So Randy Nelson is the department head. There's two other employees, a maintenance technician and a custodian. And all three of those individuals will be splitting their time between the courthouse facility and the community services building. 
uh, state highway funding for County Trunk Highway O. Um, I know that Josh Elder sent the entire county board a press release yesterday. So in early July, we were informed that there was money that was inserted by Senator Markline and Representative Kurtz for the Highway O project, which has been in the works for over 20 years. Um, and that money was inserted into the budget and it was not vetoed out. So that money is here for the county to use to, um, to finish that project. So we, we met with Senator Markline yesterday and Josh Elder was there, Candace and I. And um, so if you see those, those individuals, if you would see Secretary Thompson, uh, Senator Howard Markline, or Representative Tony Kurtz, uh, really truly thank them for that additional uh, funding so that we can move forward with um, Highway O. Uh, I also wanted to just report, I know Supervisor Luck asked a question before on the, on the conservation staffing grants, and I texted Dan Barr during the meeting, and I assumed that it was that WCA is supportive of it, and they are. They've always supported um, additional money for the conservation staffing grants. And then finally, I just wanted to say thank you for the last three months uh, for uh, allowing me to serve as the interim county administrator. I really appreciate that opportunity. I think that we accomplished a lot of things and uh, I couldn't have done that without your support. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it and look forward to working with you for a few more months. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Popper. Uh, I just want to clarify, you said that the last the budget meeting is going to be October 24th, not the last Tuesday of the month. I just want to know because sometimes it was the last Tuesday. Yeah, well, the October has five. Yeah, so it's going to be so the fourth instead of the... Okay. In an agreement with uh, Derek, we, we agreed to move it to the 24th. Okay, good. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, there's just some uh, tax documents that have a rather short turnaround time with the first and so so I haven't that for you to get items on time. Stacy Kleist, are you still here? Are you still, still here. present? Would you please give us your annual report? All right. I will need a little tech assistance to help us into the system. Grab a, grab a mic. I'll need more than mic. Okay. Yes, I'll I'll try to try to you have to join the WebEx. Just go to the county website. While uh, she's getting her PowerPoint presentation prepared, maybe we can have a five-minute comfort break, or, Trish which I need. Trish could do hers. Or Trish can start. I don't want to miss your presentation, but I need to go. Trish Clements, HHS Director, will present her annual report. All right, so in your uh, packet, you will see our annual report. This really summarizes everything that happened last year. Um, just a couple of highlights was the new director came. I started last year after Tracy left. Um, we really had a lot of staff shortages, and so we were significantly under budget last year because of that. Um, but other than that, it was a pretty good year. If anybody has any questions, I guess I'm here to answer questions, but it is in the packet if you guys want to take a look at it. Anyone have any questions for Trish? You've been on the job now for a year? Just, just over a year, yes. July 5th last year I started. You still remember your first day? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it was right here. Right in this room. <laughs> having my uh, series of public meetings, hearings, whatever. So. Mr. Chair, I have one question. It's Melissa. Yes, please. I just, um, are you feeling like your department is back to full service post-pandemic? Yes. Yeah, I would say we definitely are. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. And Stacy, are we ready with uh, nope. your presentation? I didn't know that I had to join WebEx in order to do this. So that's what we're setting okay. up here.
So, where are we here, folks? It's showing on everything else. It's not showing back here. I'm not sure it's not showing. This one must be froze up. No, this is fine. This one is just fine. Clerk of Courts, Stacy Clyde. Yeah, all right. Did you do a start slide? F5 will do it for you, too. You just have to go up to the top and hit start slide. So he's going to do that right now while we're getting the technical aspects solved. Mr. Wendell. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, owing to conversation at last month's board meeting, um, there was an ethics complaint filed against Supervisors Rudersdorf and Glassbrenner 
alleging misuse of county emails in order to attempt to influence improperly the outcome of an action before the board. Uh, the ethics complaint was filed duly. Um, it was provided uh, as described by the ethics ordinance. Um, I investigated the matter uh, with the assistance of MIS um, and a review of the correspondence of the supervisor showed that there was no wrongdoing um, and as such there was no grounds to substantiate the ethics complaint. Uh, I reported those findings to the ethics board and they elected to dismiss the complaint um, as unpursuable. Uh, and so just to be clear, there was no evidence of wrongdoing on the parts of supervisors Glassbrenner and or Rudersdorf. Thank you. Stacey, are you ready? I am. Thank Go you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Stacey Kleist and I serve as the county's clerk of court. I am really happy to be here tonight to talk about the clerk of court office we are, what we do, but more importantly, how we serve the citizens of the county. This presentation is about people. If you thought I was going to give a dry annual report, well, maybe next time, but not this time. The work that we do is about people. We provide access to the courts. I could bore you by telling you about the statutory duties that we do this according to. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to tell you about the people behind the scenes, the people we serve, and how we do this so that you and your constituents are getting the most bang for your buck. This is our clerk of court team. As the clerk of court, I am the one who's elected to serve in the office for Richland County, but I can't run the courts and do all the, that needs to be done in the courtroom and the office myself. In the court setting, the persons who perform the work in the courtroom and the office, other than the clerk of court, are known as deputy clerks. In Richland County, we have two deputy clerks of courts. Sarah Earhart on the left there is my chief deputy. She's my right hand. Just like the sheriff has a chief deputy who's his right hand, she is mine. She does everything that is criminal, as far as criminal casework, traffic, and ordinance court. And criminal and traffic court take up a lot of our calendar, so she spends a lot of her time in the courtroom. But she also has a number of duties in the office, including the management of court records and correspondence with attorneys, defendants, law enforcement, and the prosecuting agencies. DJ Adams, on the right side of the screen, serves as our civil and family deputy. He works primarily in the office, but he can be found in the courtroom whenever there are family court proceedings or matters that involve civil or small claims cases. He works with individuals and attorneys in family and civil cases and is our office liaison to the child support agency. We are the keepers and creators of the public record. Much of what we do in the way that we keep records is governed by state statutes and the Wisconsin Supreme Court rules, but it also involves a lot of different things. All three of us are county employees, but we do work on a state system, hence the issues that I had setting this up. I'm actually remoted into the state system right now so that I could do some of my work while I was also here during the meeting. Our duties are defined by statute. And we also have model record keeping guidelines that attorneys for the Wisconsin court system have developed and we confer with the attorneys at the court operations and director of state courts office on a regular basis. Those govern everything in the way of how we take minutes um, to the number of years that we retain records. So the three of us work together with other departments to run the courts and ensure smooth operations for all of the judges and the court commissioners who preside over hearings and all of the people who come into our courts every day. This is our, agents, our agency mission statement. To create, maintain, and develop access to the circuit court by responsibly managing the financial resources we've been allotted and to serve our customers with empathy and respect never forgetting that an encounter with the court system may be stressful and life-changing. 
So let's focus on the last part of that statement. Stressful and life-changing. Because life-changing events occur every day in the circuit court. Does anybody, can anybody name one? Mike. Uh, divorce. Yes, divorce impacts a lot of people, not just the two parties that are getting the divorce. Last year, in Richland County, 57 couples filed for divorce or legal separation. So, I could comb through those and tell you exactly how many of um, them have children, but safe to say, the majority. So start doing the numbers. 18 Richland County homeowners were foreclosed on. I don't know how many board members are here tonight, but I know there are 21 members of the board, and 21 Richland County renters were evicted last year. So that's 21 households, um, not necessarily 21 people. Again, um, we're talking couples, families. Um, you know, these events generate a lot of stress. Um, these events don't take just one hearing, one process. Um, it's a long, drawn-out process. There's a lot of conflict. The courts are the only place where you get legal conflict resolution. And 177 people were sued for money. So, like today, we had small claims court. We have a full afternoon calendar of small claims matters where people are trying to get money out of people that haven't paid it. It might be corporations, and but a lot of times it's local businesses. Um, and uh, always it's local landlords when they're dealing with evictions and local people who are being evicted. A lot of times people think about court as a criminal thing. You know, here, kind of like, heard some comments like, just lock them all up and whatever, you know. Um, real court is not like what you see on TV. So, our job in the clerk of court's office is to help people navigate a system with a lot of legal twists and turns. We're not lawyers, we can't provide legal advice. So we carefully walk a line providing procedural information, explaining terms and forms, often um, to people that English is not their first language. We went through a form yesterday um, with an individual who English is not his first language, um, through someone who helped him with understanding a process, he wrote, um, wrote out a plea to the court for his traffic case. He wrote it out in Spanish. So then um, we did a little maneuvering to figure out how we could get that into English and, um, and assist him the best that, that we could. Those transactions you know, take a lot. They take a lot of time, but that's what we're there to do. We are access to the courts, and that's really what it means. Anybody that needs access that has a situation. And we work really hard to create and keep detailed and accurate court records. Last year, a total of 2,731 cases were filed in the circuit court. The majority of those cases were filed in the clerk of court's office. The rest of them would be filed in the Register Probate's office. But the majority are in the Clerk of Court's office. So, but even those that are filed in the other office, we provide support for those cases because we're the financial record keepers for both offices. So we're the clearinghouse for all of the data in the court, all of the case data information, and also the financial records and the financial collections and the financial distributions. And that part of our job, all parts of our job, we take it seriously because we know that when I come in front of you, that's pretty much, uh, you know, in the next couple months when we talk budget, you just want to know how much money, Stacy, how much you bringing in. Of course, that is just part of what we do, um, but we do take it seriously. So, of course, we're always accountable to the taxpayers. 
but maybe you didn't know that we collect money for victims of crimes. Last year, we collected and dispersed over $21,000 to victims of crimes that occurred in Richland County. Since 2018, we have collected more than $68,000 in restitution. In a lot of counties, the restitution gets collected by the probation department, part of the Department of Corrections. There are some issues with that. Um, people often, if they're incarcerated or if they're on probation for a long time, the agents may want to establish um, other parts of their sentence and make sure they're rolling good with that before they get to the financial parts. Unfortunately, what often happens then is in the last couple months of probation, they are then addressing with the person, with the defendant who owes the restitution, the money that they owe. And it doesn't get paid. And then probation and parole says, well, this person is, it's time for them to be off probation, but they still owe this money. So um, they ask the court, can we have an order for a civil judgment so that now the clerk of court can collect it? And we kind of decided, you know what, that just seems like a roundabout way to get justice for victims. So a few years ago, Sarah Earhart and I went to the probation parole um, department and we sat down with their head and talked about the issues with this and they agreed that you know collecting money isn't their top priority. They want to make sure that people are compliant with things like staying off drugs, um, you know, not drinking and driving, um, not abusing people in their household, the things that the other parts of their sentence and the other parts of the crimes that they committed. And um, so we said, well, we're pretty good at collecting money. Uh, we would like a shot at this and we would like it if um, all sentences that had restitution, if we could start collecting them right away, if that never became a probation collected um, monetary amount. And they said, sounds good. <laughs> sounds like less work for us, you know. And, um, but honestly, it's less work for the clerk of court's office too, because we can establish collections right away with the person that owes it. And oftentimes we can get them set up on a wage assignment. You know, we can be garnishing wages and, and things like that. So um, it's, it's not delayed justice anymore for the victims. We get a more immediate response doing it this way. And a few years ago, when um, before 2018, to give you an idea, um, we were probably um, collecting like three to four thousand dollars a year for victims. So it has made a significant difference to do it this way. But financial accountability to the taxpayers. So last year we collected more than two hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars for Richland County. That's not state aid. That's what we actually collected. What actually came into our system that we received, that we dealt with, that we dispersed. And we exceeded our revenue projections for last year, returning a net surplus over our projections of $50,000. We did this, we continue to do this with a three-person office. With this team. So, I'm not asking you for more staff. That's not why I'm here tonight. I am asking you to just acknowledge the hard work and dedication of my Chief Deputy, Sarah Earhart, and my Deputy, DJ Adams. Because what our office does, it would not be possible without them. So when we get into budget, when we start cruising towards that in the next couple of months, if you remember any number that I give you tonight, just remember the number three, okay? Three people. And to put that into context, every one judge county that is around Richland County has at least four. Grant County is a two judge county. They have way more staff, so, but that's different. They're a full two branch county. Um, we have the same amount of staff as Forest County in Northern Wisconsin, the Crandon area. They share a judge with another county. There is no one that has a three person office that's doing what we do. So again, not asking for staff, just asking you to remember how important it is to keep three bodies in that office and also to acknowledge that without the hard work of those people on my right and left, uh, it couldn't be a three person office. I would have to ask you for more. So, 
So the next time you're in the courthouse, um, please stop by. Stop by the office. You can poke your head in the courtroom. If the sign says open, come on in. And uh, just take a seat, see what happens in there, and think about those people behind the scenes. Um, there's a lot under the surface. There's a lot under the surface in what happens, and there's a lot under the surface and that happens in your community and we do we do see that all so i thank you for your attention thank you Susie. thank you <laughs> do we have any correspondence where's mr bailey Take a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Frank. All those in favor? Signify by aye. aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Yeah.